Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, guys, welcome back. Uh, today, our discussion is based on heat transfer from extended surfaces or heat transfer from thinned surfaces. Remember, in previous class, we discussed was about insulation. So basically, the purpose of insulation was that uh, we were trying to minimize the heat loss or heat dissipation from the system to outside surroundings now what if we discussed discuss the opposite case now the case is that we want to maximize the heat transfer or speed up the heat transfer so let's consider that we have uh, a system a plane wall which is having a temperature of which is having a temperature let's say ts and it is exposed to ambient conditions for example ambient temperature is represented by t infinity and uh, convection heat transfer coefficient for the outside fluid is given by h now the rate of heat exchange between this solid wall and the outside fluid is given by Newton's law of cooling. Remember we have already discussed that heat flow from high temperature body to low temperature body we are assuming the wall temperature is greater than ambient air temperature that's why the heat will flow from the wall towards the outside fluid now what if i want to increase this heat transfer rate for example i'm interested in increasing this heat transfer rate so uh, there can be different options for example one option is to increase this temperature difference but normally this is not in our control because the operating conditions are not in our control so we cannot change uh, this temperature difference one option is that we change the value of h now what is meant by this that for example we have free convection and i introduce some external device and I change the convection into forced convection by doing so the value of H will increase so once H is increased it means convection heat transfer rate will increase but still this is an expensive option because we need to have some external device for example pump or fan for example uh, to change it into forced convection one option is that we change this area which is involved in this heat transfer and in this topic we will consider this option we will change the area which is involved in this heat transfer if we increase the area which is exposed to this convection heat transfer we can change the convection heat transfer rate so by changing the area I mean that uh, we will add some extended surface with this plane wall or with this base surface for example now I have drawn this at these extended surfaces so in other words we have changed this uh, area which is involved in this heat transfer why we need to uh, increase this heat transfer or uh, we need to uh, dissipate this heat transfer because in order for safe and long operation of the system or devices uh, in some applications we need to dissipate heat for example uh, to maintain the temperature at up to some level 
and not to exceed the temperature of the system we need to dissipate this heat transfer so as we have discussed uh, the heat is lost to the outside fluid by convection which we can uh, which we can write it as by using Newton's law of cooling you can see we will change this area here and result will be uh, increase in convection heat transfer coefficient remember we have discussed uh, in previous slide that we can also increase the convection heat transfer by changing the value of h and how we can do it by using some external device for example pump or fan uh, or replacing the ex existing one for example if we have a smaller fan we can use a bigger fan but uh, this does not seem practical because it will uh, result in increase of the cost of the overall system now the option that we are going to discuss is that uh, we will increase the surface area and how we will increase the surface area uh, by attaching some extended surfaces to the base surface now the extended surfaces are named as fins so these materials uh, these fins are normally uh, of highly conductive materials such as aluminium or copper for example now as you can see this figure is taken from the book uh, you know Singel, uh, that uh, some extended surfaces are attached to various base surfaces and the purpose is to increase the heat transfer rate so for example if we see this system we have a base surface and these external surfaces are attached to increase the heat transfer rate so there are different designs which are shown in this figure and they basically tells us that there are extended surfaces or faint surfaces attached to the base surfaces you can see that the extended surfaces uh, can be of various shapes and geometries now this is one very common example uh, fins or extended surfaces are highly used in uh, heat exchanger for example if you see this figure uh, sorry this figure so uh, there is a tube of a heat exchanger in which some fluid or liquid is flowing and outside the tube along the circumferential uh, uh, direction some coils or ring ring shaped extended surfaces are attached so there are number of extended surfaces attached to the outside of the tube and the purpose is again to increase the surface area now in this case there are flat strips type extended surfaces attached and uh, between the between the spaces of this fins or extended surfaces a gas is flowing and the liquid is flowing uh, inside this uh, inside these arrangement or inside these tubes type arrangement now this is one very common example of fint system uh, this uh, uh, we have observed in uh, the radiator of uh, automobiles for example this is a radiator in which uh, uh, it is also kind of heat exchanger uh, what what is basically inside the radiator that there are small tubes in which water is flowing and outside the tubes there are small strips uh, or small extended surfaces and between the spaces of this these extended surfaces air flows across these tubes 
so there, there there can be many other examples of these extended surfaces now what we are going to do further is to discuss some mathematical e equations for these extended surfaces so again uh, uh, this figure is ad ad adopted from the book Eunice Singer uh, what we have done is that we have a base surface and uh, the base surface is maintained at temperature T naught the base surface is maintained at temperature T naught and we have attached an extended surface of length L and depth Z to it remember the thickness of extended surface is given by small e now for this extended surface we have considered a small differential volume which is represented by this pink color and we have we will do our analysis for the small differential volume of the extended surface and then we will apply our equation that we will derive for the whole extended surface now you can see from this figure that if we consider this as our reference point so this we consider our reference point x is zero here extended surface is attached to the base surface at x is equal to zero at distance x from the base surface we have considered a small differential volume element whose length is delta x whose depth is given by z and whose thickness is t now if we want to apply energy balance for this small volume element what happens is that heat is conducted or heat is entering from the left face of the small differential volume element and it is given by Q conduction at distance X from the base surface now this is the heat which is conducted from the base surface and it has entered this extended surface now what will ha happen that this heat conducted will move out of the small differential volume element at x is equal to at x uh, at x at x plus delta x so heat is conducted out of the small volume element at x plus delta x and you can see that the top face the top face of the small volume element is exposed to outside air so heat will heat will flow out of this small volume element from the top face by convection and if we consider this front face for example a small front face heat will again lost to the surrounding by convection same is the case for example with this big face of the small volume element heat is conducted out of the small volume element element by convection there is one other phase in which heat is convected out of the small volume element and that phase is the bottom phase which is which is which is exactly which is having exactly the same uh, surface area as this top face 
so basically there are there are four surfaces for the small volume element in which convection heat transfer is occurring which uh, th these faces are the front face the back face the top face and the bottom face and remember if i repeat again the heat is conducted into the small volume element at distance x from the base surface <coughs> sorry and heat is conducted out of the small volume element at distance x plus delta x from the base surface so if we apply energy balance for the small a volume element which we have already discussed in our previous lectures uh, we get this equation this is rate of heat entering into the small volume element and this is the rate of heat leaving the small volume element remember rate of heat leaving is heat conduction out at x plus delta x plus heat convected out of the small volume element from different phases of from different phases of the volume element And remember, you can see that rate of heat convected from the small volume element is from different phases. So here, instead of area, you can see that perimeter, perimeter and x is involved. Or in other words, if you use Newton's law of cooling for each phase from which convection heat transfer is occurring and you add up all the convection heat transfer you will get this equation and remember this we have already discussed this is from Taylor's expansion this is Q conducted out of the small volume element at X at x plus delta x and this we can obtain from Taylor's expansion and putting all these putting all these in this energy balance we get this equation and after uh, some simplification and changing this t minus t infinity t minus t infinity we named it as theta remember theta is temperature difference which is t minus t infinity and if i write t uh, theta naught so theta naught will be theta naught will be t naught minus t infinity So, we have introduced a new uh, variable here, for example, which is m square, and m square is equal to combination of these, which is convection heat transfer coefficient into perimeter of the extended surface divided by Ka. Remember, A is area of the tip and in this case area of the tip is this area so a is area of the extended surface or we can say it is the tip area so our differential uh, equation changes into this form this is a kind of simplified version of this above equation 
so we have obtained uh, the second order differential equation uh, in which uh, m square represents this and theta represents t infinity minus uh, sorry theta represents t minus t infinity now this is for your self exercise that the general solution of the second order differential equation is this so basically uh, this equation tells us about the temperature of extended surface for any value of x we can obtain temperature of the extended surface but remember uh, there are two arbitrary constants c1 and c2 which we need to find out its values so that we can have a plot for this temperature distribution for these extended surfaces so for these we would use boundary conditions so for example the first boundary condition that we are going to use is at uh, the first boundary condition is at x is equal to 0 and this is that region at which the extended surface is attached to the base surface so at x is equal to 0 is that region at which extended surface is attached to the base surface so for example if base surface is having temperature tb or t naught outside fluid temperature is t infinity so what will be the temperature at x is equal to 0 at x is equal to 0 temperature of extended surface is equal to base surface temperature so we can say at x is equal to 0 theta is equal to theta naught or theta b in some books it is given by theta b in some books it is given by theta naught so this is our boundary condition number one at x is equal to 0 theta is equal to theta naught now we will consider three different cases uh, for these extended surfaces i will follow the sequence of jp holman in which three cases are discussed for example case number one is case number one is the fin is attached to a base surface and the length of fin is very very long so the fin is of infinite length and such that such that temperature at the end of the fin or we can say temperature at the tip of the fin is equal to ambient temperature for example if i want to plot it here so the fin is of very long length we will discuss what is meant by very long length for the time being you just focus on this uh, case number one that at x is equal to zero here and uh, let's say this is length of pin and in this case l tends to be very long and it is given that for case number one when length is very large it means that we are moving very far from this base surface it means that the temperature here at the tip of the fin will be equal to ambient temperature so this is our case number one we will discuss we will discuss different boundary conditions for these different cases now case number two is a kind of practical case that the fin is of finite length and it loses heat by convection from its tip or from its end so case number two is something like this that the fin is of finite length 
and it loses heat to outside fluid by convection so what is difference between case number one and case number two in case number one the length is very long and the tip of the fin is exactly having the same temperature as the outside fluid now the difference between case number one and case number two is that case case in case number two the length is relatively quite less than case number one and its tip also loses heat by convection so it means it means that the tip is having the tip is having greater temperature than outside fluid temperature okay and case number three is that we are having of an extended surface which is attached to a base surface it is of finite length and uh, th the tip of the fin is insulated so this face is insulated now this does not seem practical uh, we can consider it like this that for example there are two symmetrical uh, fins attached to the base surfaces and uh, the, like the situation is like this like the fin is of finite length and the tip of the the tip of the two fin join uh, join together at this section so you can see or we can discuss that the heat transfer from the tip of the fin is zero so we can treat it as case number three that uh, the tip of the fin is insulated so we can consider it like this case so there are three different cases and there are three uh, there will be different bond conditions for these cases